Hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we're going to continue our painting series of Company of Heroes the board game and we're going to be looking at the models from Terrain Pack 2, or at least two of them. As you can see from the um, Im image of the screen art, or the box art actually, uh, you can see a ruined cathedral, some ruined houses, but that's not all what there is in the box. And today we're going to be painting a British emplacement as well as a British Beaufort's gun. And I just want to say, uh, just uh, there's no confusion, of course, that I'm not sp sponsored by any kind of uh, defense installation, even though I mentioned the name Beaufort here. So with that said, let's get into painting some of these miniatures. And let me see if I can line up my camera. Let's see here. And now um, I've already started a little bit ahead. Uh, over here, we already see the uh, Beaufort gun. Um, it's, it's a really cool model. Um, you can see that it's um, um, been primed already. I primed it in black and then I base coated it with a paint that you may actually recognize from the British Bren carry that I painted before. I base coated it with um, Vallejo's bronze green. So that's already done and you can do so as well at home. Very, very easy. Just put a thin layer of uh, bronze green, 50-50 uh, um, or 50% bronze green, 50% water. Uh, give it a thin base coat, leave it to dry, and you're ready to go after you've primed it in black with a black spray can uh, primer. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we are going to um, give it a light dry brush of, and is also a, um, a color that you probably recognize from before, and it's called Vallejo's Valais, Valais, uh, Erekian Sand. So we're going to use that, we're going to give the uh, bottle a, a good shake. And we're going to put it out over here on a small palette. I'm using it neat. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to take a fairly large brush. This is a um, a paint master from Vallejo, uh, PM058. And we're going to uh, put some paint on the brush. And just like, you know, when we dry brush things, we are going to wipe off most of it on a piece of kitchen towel or um, uh, some kind of paper. And you want to make sure that you wipe off pretty much all the paint, making sure that only a small bit is left on the paintbrush. Make sure that uh, no extra bristles is covered in paint. So it looks like this. Hopefully that will be fine. And what you do simply is you cover uh, the raised areas in... That's a little bit too much. So, so that. Uh, only the raised areas of the gun and the model, including the wheelbase, some of the machinery is here. And as you can see, this is um, a Bofors gun. It's a 40 millimeter, was designed in Sweden, where I'm from. And um, this is an early model. And you can see that because there are no uh, gun shields here to protect the crew. So this is an early model that uh, Bad Crow Games, which made um, Company of Heroes the board game, decided to use. And um, it's a really cool um, model in the board game. It can really cover down a lot of area with anti-infantry damage. It deals some horrible damage to your figures if you get into their, their firing range and line of sight. So um, it looks pretty uh, well covered now. As you can see, that it's, it actually uh, looks like you've, I've covered it too much. But don't worry. We're actually going to fix that right now. And what we are going to do is we are going to give it a shade of uh, black um, a black shade from, uh, from uh, Vallejo as well. And we're going to give it a shade right away. Uh, and the good for the thing for that is that I'm going to leave it to dry. Give it a little bit here. We'll, we'll do it neat which is nice, nice and easy. And we're just gonna give it a small shade. Take um, a regular paintbrush, you can't, can use any paintbrush you want, and give it a good shade of the entire miniature. Make sure that it pools in all the recesses. And as you can see, it really darkens these areas where it's a little bit too light from the dry brush. So if you make mistakes there, you feel like, oh, wow, I, I, I really shouldn't have covered so much. Uh, I put too much paint on the paint uh, a paintbrush with, with the dry brush. The, the shade here will really cover that area for you. 
So let it pool in the recesses. Don't pool on the surface areas too much because it, it does. Just wipe it off with a clean brush or just continue um, painting it like I do here. Make sure you also get the undercoat areas. It's not really that important because um, the viewers and the players are not going to see it. But it's, if you if you damage or you flip it around, you want to make sure you that it's covered as well, simply because well, it's nice. Um, that now you're going to come to an area where you know you're going to have to hold the um, the model uh, in order to get these wheels, and it may be so that you're going to get some uh, paint on your fingers. So I'm going to grab the gum barrel here, just very lightly, and cover the last areas here. As you can see, it's already starting to look a little bit better, and it will look even more, even better when we've finished with it. Okay, so now we can cover back the, the gun barrel over here as well. The 40mm was designed in Sweden, as I said. But the company Beaufort is called the 40mm L60 gun, to be precise, and it was sold to the Netherlands Navy in 1934, I believe. Uh, to be used on their cruiser De Ruyter. <clears throat> and then it became <clears throat> pretty much a big hit and it was adopted by the British Navy, Swedish Navy, um, as well as the Americans and it's still in use today, an updated version from the 1950s. Uh, it's proven uh, design, design is very proven and I'm really happy the Backrow Games included it in the board game, which is a phenomenal board game, I have to say it. You have to get that game if you haven't had a chance to play it yet. Now, we're going to leave it here to dry a little bit. <clears throat> and in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to paint the um, um, the emplacement. The emplacement looks like this when it's unpainted and un without any, any primer on it. And it's a fairly good model. It has lots of small little details and some fuel uh, barrels and like some ammunition uh, uh, um, boxes over here and has you know some fuel cans over here some barrels and some boxes and bits and like even has like a tiny bit here that, with some kind of like ammunition here that you you can paint so if you don't want to paint it i just want to show you what it looks like before we get started all right now i've chosen to prime this uh, model in a gray uh, sp uh, spray can primer and um, it looks like this. Um, it looks quite okay right now, and it's ready to be put some paint on it. So the first thing we're going to do with this um, this model is that we're going to cover the sandbags first. And for the sandbags, I've chosen to use a um, a color from Vallejo called Ivory. Now, ivory is a very, very good color. I can highly recommend it. Even if you just go for the Citadel range, uh, range of paints, um, Ivory is a good um, range because this doesn't really have any equivalent. I've seen many other modelers and, and YouTubers, they use Ivory even if they are diehard fans of, um, of Citadel. So I'm gonna use it undiluted because it's a very, it's a very fluid paint, so to say. <coughs> Sorry about that, I've got a small cough. Maybe I'm catching something. Maybe I've been painting too much, probably like something like that. I'm going to hold up the model like this for you to see, and I'm going to co uh, cover all the areas of the sandbags. And if you think that the sandbags are being like too white, it's it's too bright. Don't worry. We are going to cover them with a nice shade afterwards. Um, keep in mind there's a spade up here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a spade. We're going to cover that as well just because I'm lazy and I don't want to uh, pick out the details here. And that uh, means we're going to give the shade, a spade uh, a good uh, coverage of some other paints afterwards. Okay. So uh, we're going to give this one two to three layers. Make sure you paint the other side as well. And for this um, this particular model, I'm using my favorite brush of all time, which is a, if you can see this, uh, Windsor & Newton uh, Cotman brush, Sanx 3. It's a phenomenal brush, highly recommended. It. It's also synthetic as well, which I prefer to use uh, when I'm painting. I'm, mm, 
I sometimes use animal uh, brushes as well from animal hair, but I really prefer the uh, the synthetic ones, um, not just for the animal's sake, but uh, also for I like the way they handle my paints. If you tend to uh, put the paint here and it covers some areas accidentally, don't worry, we can actually fix that over in the shade afterwards. point here is to just give it a nice even coverage, let it get into these recesses. Um, there's a box up here over here that you can see uh, that I don't want it that covered of course with the ivory paint. looks something like this and because I chosen a gray over a completely white spray can primer um, and the reason I've done that is that uh, I don't want the, the paint to be shining through entirely uh, when I'm painting and now we're coming up on the last piece of Uh, this one, sandbags, it's a phenomenal model really, and uh, I really like it. Um, in the in the both in the board game and the computer game, I like to build emplacements all over the map, simply because it annoys the enemy and my opponents. Like they has they have to take them down, and in the computer game, I build emplacement all over the map. Every time the opponent moves, he gets shot to pieces by either a machine gun or my dudes in these emplacements. And uh, I've been told that I'm a very annoying player. I don't know if that's a compliment, but um, I, I, I take it as compliment if my opponent says so. Um, so something like this, uh, you can give it another cover uh, of paint as well if you want to. I'm not going to do it here right now because it's going to take a little bit of two time, but it will give you a basic idea of what to do. Then we are going to uh, clean our brush with some water and a paint uh, pot that I have and pot of uh, water that I have nearby. And we're going to put our attention to actually this area here. There are two ways you can do this. Either you can paint it in a brown earthy color that's fine. Um, or you can paint it as a concrete paint, which um, is what I'm going to do. It will contrast off nicely with the white and with the areas inside as well. And I think the British build these out of concrete as well, unless they're out in the open and then maybe they're, they're like earthen inside. So I'm going to put this down for a second and I'm going to show you which paints I'm going to use to color this one. I'm going to use neutral gray and I'm going to put this one in right away. Neutral grey is what I'm putting in here. So I'm going to put in like two, three uh, drops of paint there from the layer. Then I'm going to put in uh, another color that we used a lot, which is uh, German German grey, also from the layer. Give the bottle a good shake. We you squeeze out another two, uh, three drops or, or like one drop per month. Yeah, something like this. And then, just because we want it not that dark, we want some white grey in um, from Vallejo as well. Give it a good shake, and as you can see, our uh, um, our Beaufort's gun is drying very smoothly and nicely. So only a tiny, tiny, like half a drop here, gives you a good indication of how much uh, we are putting in here. And also, I'm going to uh, dilute this one with about one drop of water. Then I'm going to mix it all in together and as you can see it mixes into a nice grey kind of uh, paint but not too dark. And if you feel this is too dark just or too light just uh, add some colour variation using the colours I provided you. Now um, I'm going to hold the, um, the, the model like this and I'm going to cover the entire base here with this paint. I'm going to be trying to be try careful not to cover the wooden walls here and 
but everything else in between I will. Make sure that you actually cover the inside of this uh, square shaped area here where you actually place the dice from the board game. It's a phenomenal way of actually play, uh, coming up with that design. Really like it. So uh, my hat off for you, Bad Crow Games. Whoever came up with this idea, thank you. Because the, that means the dice don't move around when we're playing. And uh, you can use these dice usually mostly for some kind of like um, health uh, meter for the, this, this emplacement. Uh, I think the, the dice here are per... Well, it's a purple um, health meter when it comes to, to emplacement, I believe. I think so. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I played it because I've been focusing on trying to get my YouTube channel ready and, and painting these. And I liked putting paint on my my miniatures because I think they look a little bit better. And that's the reason why I'm painting as well, besides that it's fun. And also, I think that um, putting some paint here also gives the, more, uh, the miniatures, like, it gives them a whole new life. So it doesn't have to be perfect, this area. Uh, keep in mind, we are not going to shade this area. Um, as far as I know, I, I'm, I don't think it needs any shade. It's already quite dark. Uh, make sure that you get these small little areas in here. Sorry for bouncing the camera here. Um, obviously, there's some areas you need to be more careful with. Turning it over to the other side, making sure that I got this area right. If you manage to cover some of the um, areas inside here, or you 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 touched over some of the wooden boxes, don't worry about it, because if you cover the sides, uh, it's not really that bad because you can use that as kind of like a shade when you put the shade on them later on. Um, I'm gonna turn around and see that I covered every everything here. I'm gonna give it another grip here and as you said I, as you saw I'm not using it entirely undiluted but only a tiny drop of water because I want this paint actually to, to be quite thick uh, when I apply it you can also do it in two, two to three thin layers that's also fine um, but I've chosen to use this area here as well um, now we're coming to some areas here. I'm going to paint over these small ammunition box or well, um, like shells over here. And I'm also at the same time, I missed a few spots over here. At the same time, I'm also going to cover the entire base over here. Um, so if you lightly touch the if you lightly touch the, um, the sandbags, that's why now you can actually hold the sandbags up here. That's why I wanted to paint them first. So you can actually see that uh, you can actually hold them on to ho hold on to them, giving you a little bit more grip. And hopefully I'm holding it up for you. I hopefully you can understand what I'm doing here, painting the sides of this miniature. It saves you the effort of like, having to do so later. Some people prefer to paint the size black, that's perfectly fine. Gives them a nice, like, kind of like even finish for uh, when you finish the model. And I'm turning it around over here so you can see that it's finally done. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look a little bit better on the table. All right, I'm going to leave this one down over here to the side to dry. I'm going to put um, some water on my brush so I can clean it. I'm not going to show it to you, it's just regular water and I have a regular pot from Citadel you can use in a, bo in a, <clears throat> in a cup or so you like. And you can also clean my dry brush, I forgot about doing that before. Now the next step we're going to do is we're going to cover this area that we just uh, painted here with some some of the um, the wooden areas here on the inside. I'm going to show them to you over here like the inside, the wooden areas here. Now for that uh, paint, I just want to show you the paint first. And it's called uh, Flat Earth from Malaya. Um, 
it's also a really good color I like to use a lot and I'm gonna put it out uh, well let's put it out over here if you have a wet palette you can also use that I'm using this one undiluted you can use it with a tiny drop of water if you like to and using the same brush that I used before I'm gonna move this gun over here to the side And I'm going to cover the, uh, let me see if I can raise the camera a little bit so I can just, I don't bump into it. There you go. If you like what you're seeing here, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and um, then you can write in what you think I should paint next. Oh, it didn't really work. Um, I think I've finalized my my camera here. Um, it's all about putting some, making sure these wood panels really show. Um, keep in mind that you also have to paint the top side of the wood panels over here. And Make sure you get a good even coverage. See if I can turn it up size so you can see. I'm gonna show you how to paint one of these panels. And I prepared one of the these others. I can I can show you what it looks like when it's finished. Because they're all the same and um don't really see there is any point of painting the same thing twice for you. Um, something like this. Sure, we get good even coverage. No, none of the white or the gray shining through. And make sure you also get this post here. It's otherwise quite easy to miss. All right, that's what it looks like uh, when one side is done. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when all of them are done. I've pre-painted this one before. So it looks like this. It looks quite nice and even and kind of like cool. Um, what I'm gonna do now before we put the shades on is that I'm gonna paint these details inside the, um, inside this, um, what do you call it? Inside this um, emplacement. Sometimes I forget what I'm painting on. At least I know that I'm not painting something like Gloomhaven or something like that. Thank God for that. We would love to play, paint glue in another time, perhaps. Now, we're going to give these um, crates and stuff like that inside the um, the emplacement a little bit of a different color. Um, we are going to paint these wooden ammo crates, uh, give them a base color of something called um, middle stone. And uh, Middlestone is something that you may have noticed that I used in when I painted um, the from Vallejo, when I painted the King Tiger tank. And um, the, um, it is a really good color to use. I'm using it undiluted. Bring it up and just to make sure that you see it's these boxes here. And you can you might ask why I'm using such a yellowy color uh, is that I will actually explain to you when the shades are put on and it will actually shine shine a little bit more. Uh, make sure that you touch the areas on the sides here, but don't touch the emplacement concrete floor. I'm painting the sides here now. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'll show you just when I'm done here. I'm painting the sides over here. 
that's when if you covered some of these areas with some brown paint it's not that yeah, hard to actually paint over so um, we're also going to cover these ammo boxes <clears throat> which I think are ammo boxes maybe for a machine gun or some rations maybe it is in these boxes I don't know if you know please put them in the comments I'd love to know <clears throat> more about how the British built their emplacements maybe you remember from the computer game as well And two more ammo crates. What do you think is the best part of coming up here? Is the board game or the computer game? Let me know in the comments. Which one do you prefer? One, two, or three? And what if you play the board game? <clears throat> please let me know what you think is the your best part, your favorite parts of it. And uh, <clears throat> now we are going to. And now we're going to move on to these this little thing here, which is a kind of like a leather sack, some sort of it. And I'm going to use a paint I used also before called okay, um, uh, red leather from Vallejo and I need a tiny tiny drop from it because it's the only color we're from that from that bottle we are going to use undiluted and we're going to put it on this this little bag here shall we get the sides as well because it's a, one of these items that really stands out if you were to touch the the um the concrete parts you can just uh, cover it over a little bit here. You can see that I've missed it over here. I'm going to touch it over in the <clears throat> finishing touches. And now we're going to go over to the uh, fuel drums and the uh, fuel cans over here. Oh, and I actually, I forgot. Uh, we forgot to paint one more ammo crate. One more ammo crate lying over here. There you go. Now, for the fuel uh, drums and the fuel cans, I'm going to use a color that we haven't used before, <clears throat> also from Vallejo, called, um, there you go, Russian Uniform World War II. Give it a good shake. And undiluted. Doesn't require that much. And we're going to give them kind of like a good jerry can finish here. I don't know why they call them jerry cans actually. Anyone knows? And also by painting them in another color, <clears throat> it gives them a nice contrasting look to the rest of the gray and brown area.
and we're also going to cover the um, this fuel can over here. I think it's a fuel can. And finally, we also have this. I can touch up some of these areas as well here. These fuel cans, shield drums here, which actually is a focal point of this, this little miniature. And it will really make these stand out when they're done. My favorite faction to play in Combat Heroes, both the board game and the computer game, is the Germans. Um, preferably the regular Germans, even though I'm starting to like the Orbe Commander Vest more and more. They have a very strong early game, and a little bit more problematic middle game, and a strong finish. In the, the board game, the Orbe Commander Vest is extremely strong in taking territory early on in the game, giving them a big resource advantage. But they lack emplacements. Well, actually, they do have emplacement, but they lack heavy machine guns to pin air, air units, and they need to build static emplacements uh, in order to um, to actually be able to pin and hold areas, uh, which the regular German uh, faction don't really need. Uh, they rely on heavy machine guns instead, and that's also really why I really like them. But they're more predictable. So um, I prefer to play the Oba Commander Vest in many aspects. Uh, the British is something that I've never really played to a great extent, even though I said really like emplacement, but I find them um, to be a little bit too slow to get out on the field and they cost a lot of manpower. And they don't feel a huge variety of infantry in the early game as well. Now, as you can see here, we're almost finished here. The only thing we're gonna cover now is this box here and this I don't know what, what this really is um, but uh, I'm gonna paint them anyways with a German dark grey um, it's some kind of storage uh, um, things anyways um, oh before we we move into this one we also forgot one more thing here it is called it's some kind of box I think it's a leather box, so we're going to cover this one with red leather as well. Since you have so many uh, details here, it's hard sometimes to pick out what is actually what. Now back to the original plan here to paint them um, regular German um, German grey. This little uh, square shaped box over here. If you think that I'm wrong in my colours, let me know in the comments, please, because um, I'd love to know. I'd love to get feedback. Um, and make sure that you get the insides of this one as well. Can be a little bit tricky and fiddly, but try it. Uh, you also have a little crate over here. Something like this. And then you're gonna paint this area over here with German dark gray. And that concludes this area of the accessories and the tools and things like that except for one thing which i almost forgot and that is the spade that i showed you before that i told you we're gonna touch up as well 
And the spade is going to get a finish of German uh, dark gray, German gray, uh, for the the spade itself. Oh, my brush was a little bit too soaked. And for the handle itself, we're going to use flat earth uh, for the tool handle or the spade handle. Hopefully you can see that over here. Something like this. All right. Um, when that is done, we are going to give the entire model, except for the concrete floor, a good shade of um, sepia shade from Vallejo. And sepia shade is going to be covering um, everything except for the concrete floor and the fuel drums, which we are going to get give them a shade of black shade instead. Um, so what you do is you apply this almost undiluted. And when I say almost, I want a little bit of water in it. So about 70% um, sepia shade and 30% water. And I prefer, if I am if I may, to use a rather flat brush for this. It can be an uneven one as well. But um, a flat brush is quite needed. This one is quite old and a little bit worn, but it's a Series A35. I don't know which, which company it is really, but um, I take a little bit of water for my watering pot. And apply it like this. Now the thing is, the paint has had time to dry for um, these ones, but not for the, for the accessories. And I apply it like this in one brush stroke like this, letting it soak in the recesses. Covering the sides. If you have a smaller brush, you can use that as well. This is going to give it look of Um, this sandbaggy feeling. As you can see, how I touched over some of this one with a um, with flat earth before. Don't worry, because this one will make it appear like it's part of the wash. And then I will also do the insides here. You can also do agrax earth shade on these ones if you want to. Uh, might even be better. I'm using these this one as well. Um, now I apply a second layer of the same wash. And before this one has time to dry, this is the area here, um, we are going to apply a tiny amount of uh, black shade on top of the uh, sepia wash that I showed you before. There is a reason for that. And I want it to be a little bit darker, darker in those recesses. I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. And I'll show you why. Like this, oh, maybe a little bit too much. I wanted to be having a little bit of a dirty look. Here it shows a little bit better. Here it's got a little bit too much. If it's too much, that's perfectly fine. Just even it out. Don't wipe off most of the paint or the wash on the brush before you do this. And when you already have the black wash already, you can also start coating the fuel drums, the black areas. Uh, 
And before I forgot to tell you, forget to tell you, um, we should of course also cover the inside areas here. But we're going to use a slightly different, um, um, slightly different uh, wash. We're going to use Agrix Earthshade for that from Citadel. Agrix, Agrix Earthshade looks uh, like this. Give it a good shake. Apply it undiluted from the um, um, from the uh, from the pot. I'm using a smaller brush, uh, smaller um, smaller uh, paintbrush for this. The leather area as well, and as you can see, when you're applying this. Put it on these ones as well if you forgot about them. It doesn't matter if it's black or brown wash with these ones. It can be a little bit dirty on the brown. You can see um, the it really starts to come out here. Uh, all these hinges and areas where you really want it to be covered. Um, you can cover them again if you feel that it's uh, it was the wrong wash on the sepia wash here it should actually be agrix earth shade on this one make sure that you also cover the spade now that one is done i'm going to leave it here to dry fortunately you don't have to dry it with me because i already pre-painted it and it when it's finished it should look something like this All right and now it's time for our finishing touches um, we are going to uh, cover some of these areas uh, we're going to start with the details we're going to start with middle stone and a tiny amount of middle stone and cover some of these raised areas here on the uh, ammo crates the ones that are catching the sunlight here Not going to paint the sides, I'm going to paint the front. Anything that catches some sunlight doesn't need to be a lot of paint on the brush, just a little bit of a bit, just to make sure that it stands out a little bit. And you make sure you don't want to fill the recesses. Okay. Kind of like a small, tiny dry brush without much of a dry brush. Um, when it comes to the fuel cans, we're going to do the same thing, um, but with Russian uniform, the original color. Same thing there, not much paint. And we're only looking to paint the raised areas here. The ones catching the sunlight, the top here. We're not looking to find uh, the um, the recesses here. Hopefully, you managed to see that. And you can paint the between these lines here as well. Make sure not to use too much uh, paint on the brush here because you want to make sure that the X here, hopefully you can see that X here on side, inside these cans are shown. So I'm only painting the, the sides here, the handles, and the sides to make make sure that they stand out a little bit. Tiny highlight. There's another barrel here. If the sun doesn't shine on them, just leave them. The sun always shines on the British. 
And now we're going to go into the this little um, red leather, same thing there. Just touch it up slightly. This is what we call highlighting. And you can highlight up in stages if you like when you um, mix it in with alternating term, uh, or with more and more quantities of, of a lighter color such as white. I'm not going to do that now, but uh, that's this is how you do it. This is only to get them looking a little bit okay on the tabletop. This is this leather bag also needs a little bit touching up. And finally, we're also going to look at. Uh, we're not going to use any highlight on these br uh, black areas because I want them a little bit black, uh, darker. But we are going to give a highlight of uh, Vallejo's uh, flat earth, undiluted on these boxes. Again, touching only the raised areas here. The posts here are raised areas, I believe. And as you can see, they're already starting to look a little bit better. If you want them even lighter, mix in a little bit of white. I think this is fine for now. And then, what you can do to uh, get it done a little bit better is that you can use um, a dry brush uh, as a highlight. Soak the paint with some, some um, with a brush. Wipe many, most of it off. And make sure that you dry brush lightly the insides of this. Uh, wooden paneling. Okay, making sure that it blends in with the with the wash. Now, um, before we move into some final details, we we need to pay some attention to some of the uh, sandbags here, and you can either leave it as it is if you like it. Or you can do is what the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to give it a small and very very light dry brush with a color called um, Terminata Stone uh, from Citadel. It's a dry uh, it's a dry brush. It's a, it's a color designed for dry brushing. So um, and therefore I've used it before. It's quite nice and it's quite neat. And we are going to give it a, we, you don't even, even need to shake this paint you can see that inside it's very very dense this paint it's not even fluid it's more like a thick paste and when you put it on the paint it's kind of like like kind of like chafes off so um the point here is to wipe off pretty much all of it on a piece of kitchen towel um, because it can be very very dense otherwise uh, you may even have to use several kitchen wipes because it's so dense, this, this color. Um, this is what I'm doing now. I'm trying to show you every step of the way. Sometimes I miss it. And you can try it over here. Now it looks a little bit okay. You can barely see it on my, on my thumb here. And therefore, you can get, go for the raised areas here if possible. Give it a very small, light, dry brush. Give it dusty, weathered look on the, the raised surfaces. Oh. Was it the wrong one? Maybe I used the wrong one. Maybe I did. 
Oh yeah, no, I didn't. Um, as you can see here, I also forgot in the previous one that I didn't paint that I, I forgot to paint the the tool here. And that's fine. We can just paint it up now. You should know what how to paint it. It's a very common uh, mistake that you make. If sometimes miss details even in a, in a video like this, and that's no problem. We can touch it up with some flat earth. Instead of painting the tool handle, uh, the, the tool itself with uh, German dark ray, we can go straight into actually painting it with uh, Vallejo's uh, natural steel. We're going to use Vallejo's natural steel um, on a few of the other smaller areas. And this will be a second last uh, finish of this model. We apply the paint undiluted. Maybe I need to clean the brush first. Maybe. Looking like this. We're also going to paint the kind of like button here, there. How to tie the the, uh, the the leather sack. We're also going to touch off the uh, ammunition here. First, we're going to give them a coat of natural steel, and then we're going to give them a coat of some uh, gold paint. I'll paint on this. Well, uh, we can also give them a small dry brush of natural steel on this area of the the, um, the barrels, kind of uh, giving the impression that they were actually made of not plastics as this model, but also from actually from actual metal. It's a trick to, a trick for the eye. Also, given the raised area, uh, kind of like a metal -y look here. You can also do that for this area here, for the black area that we didn't do any shade on, and for this little box here. All right. Um, so you can see here that there are some parts here on the model that I've missed with the, the grey paint. And you can now also do it in the finishing touch and. Such as touching the, those areas up. Um, that's a good way to see like, oh, I made a mistake here. Let's just let's just fix that. That's what also finishing touches are about. Um, you can also see here if the, the paint has pooled too much over the over the uh, concrete areas. You can actually touch this up right now as well. Gonna hold them up here for you. See, so I'm painting these again. And for the other side. You go. Our final thing on this model will be what I said before to paint some gold finish on the uh, ammunition. For that, I think the best color to use is um, from Citadel called Retributor Armor. Give it a good shake, and then finally, we're going to put in dots of this color. I'm playing it straight neat from the, the 
from the, the, the pot. Kind of out over here. It gives them that tiny finishing touch that I really like. Now, remember before that we painted the um, the uh, the Bofors gun? Well, the Bofors gun is pretty much entirely dry. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I've primed this already. And I did the steps that we did before with another model. There are two of them in the package. And what we're going to do now is that uh, we can see that it looks quite okay. Um, we are going to give it a light dry brush of natural steel. And uh, we do so because we want the metallic finish on the, uh, the model, at least I want it. Natural steel from Vallejo and a light dry brush. Wipe it off most of the thing on the thing and lie dry brush on some of the raised areas. If you want to pay a kill marks or something like that, now is the time to do that too. And our final touch will be on this one to paint the road wheels, and we're going to paint these road wheels by putting some paint on German grey on them. And that co co actually concludes that model. It's a fairly easy model to paint, painting it, uh, playing it ein diluter. You can also apply uh, black paint on that one. That also works really fine. Um, the road wheels goes like this. inner road wheels as well like this and the other side can be a bit fiddly to paint but you get the hang of it after a while if you think the metal dry brush became too strong here you can easily coat it with a coat of black wash again and reapply it uh, one more time it's a little bit more time consuming but uh, if you feel that you made a mistake, don't worry, we can actually fix it uh, with most things. And I'm not going to give you a grade or anything on your, on your painting. The, the, the point here is to have fun when you're painting. And that's what I'm doing here. And I, uh, I like it. So if you like my channel, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit the bell button so you don't miss any... Um, any notifications when I put the next video I try to put out once a week usually on Mondays or Tuesdays those are my days off or oh, actually Mondays are my days off I wish I had Tuesdays off and something like this all right that concludes the this model here um, thank you very much for watching uh, if you like I said before if you like what I'm doing and you like you would like to uh, learn more how to paint models um, please consider uh, subscribing liking the channel uh, otherwise this uh, concludes this um, these two models or these models like this from company over here's the board game uh, from uh, Bad Club Games, from Terrain Pack 2. Um, you can see them here, oh, and also my, my, my kitchen towel there. Um, if you like what I see, please uh, continue watching my other videos, and um, otherwise I'll see you next time. And please go and put some paint on those models. Thank you for watching.